Around 65 to 100 million years ago, one of the most ancient groups of mammals started branching off into some of the most unusual and adorable neotropical creatures present today. Over millions of years, the Xenarthra clade evolved into guinea pig-sized creatures to megafauna, including massive ground sloths and armadillos the size of small cars. The fossil record shows about 100 genera, including around 80 sloth and over 100 cingulate species. During the Lujanian Age in South America, the total number of plant-eating mammal species that weighed more than a ton was even more impressive than in present-day Africa. As many as 19 species occurred in a single location, and about 80% of mammals that were above 500 kilograms were xenarthrans. But how could this group live in the same habitat, filling basically the same ecological niche, and not overeat to cause starvation on themselves? The answer is in their low metabolism and, hence, low energy requirements. Since this superorder does everything slow, including their digestion, they required smaller amounts of food than other mammals of similar body size, and that allowed so many xenarthrans to live in the same habitat. The xenarthran diversity was reduced when all the clades' megafauna went extinct at the very end of the Pleistocene and the beginning of the Holocene. This was mostly due to the Ice Age, but also could have been the result of humans hunting them for nourishment. All current and extinct species have been found in specific regions of the Americas, primarily South America. Today, a few can be found in Central America but only one species, the nine-banded armadillo, is present in the southern United States. The name Xenarthrans come from two Greek words meaning unusual joints. Members of this clade have extra articulations on some vertebrae. Another similarity Xenarthrans share is that they have long curved claws. Xenarthrans also have teeth unlike any other mammals. They have simple teeth, which are similar in structure, and some species lack teeth altogether. Today there are about 40 species of xenarthrans. Some hang upside down from trees, others have a long snout with a long prehensile tongue, and some excavate the ground in search of insects and small invertebrates. Some will even eat carrion. These species are often hard to find and therefore difficult to study. Many xenarthran species are virtually unknown in the wild. Sadly, due to extensive habitat loss throughout South and Central America, virtually every xenarthran population has declined in recent years. But there is still hope. With proper training and education, anyone can become a sloth scientist, armadillo ambassador, or anteater advocate. The International Union for Conservation of Nature works to save ecosystems and species. Within IUCN's Species Survival Commission, there are more than 160 specialist groups. One of these groups, the Anteater, Sloth and Armadillo Specialist Group, or ASASG for short, is a network of mammologists and conservationists who work to understand and protect the Xenarthra species. ASASG helps Xenarthrans by supporting field research, conservation measures, and educational programs. In total, the IUCN Species Survival Commission has more than 10,600 volunteer experts who help build knowledge on the status of plant, fungi, and animal species, and identifies their threats. These groups then provide advice, develop policies and guidelines, and facilitate conservation planning. The ASASG is also supported by two partner institutions, FIA and Nurtured by Nature. We should celebrate armadillos, sloths, and anteaters for their unique adaptations. We also need to help conserve them since they play an important role in the ecology of many habitats of the neotropics but are facing many threats. The species that are alive today are the descendants of a diverse taxonomic group that withstood at least one mass extinction. Humans have the power to save these magnificent animals. But will we? Remember to keep them in your heart, but leave them in the wild.